everybody and welcome back to the channel you're watching indigo tech tutorials in this video i'm going to show you how you can host your rails app on a digital ocean droplet which will allow you to run your rails app for a, a pretty good price digital ocean is really good it has also some offers so that you can get like 200 dollars of free tokens that's what i'm using right now so if you're using the plan that i show in the video which is about like ten dollars a month it means you could host your website for like a year or two i don't know if the credits expire but it's still a really good deal all right we're just gonna go ahead and create a quick test application so i'm gonna open up the terminal all right i'm gonna start off by creating a new app which is going to be the app that we're going to deploy to the digital ocean droplet so to create this new app Let's just use the Rails new command, and I'll put the name of the app. Let's call it my cool app. And then for the database, there's a few options, but I'm gonna use Postgres. And we're also, that's gonna be the one that's gonna be used in DigitalOcean as a database. And then I'll need to do dash C, and I'll specify Tailwind as the CSS framework. And I'll press enter. This will run the command and generate our Rails app. All right, so now that that's generated, you can cd into our app and start the server with bin slash dev. This will allow us to view the server on port 3000. So I'm gonna open the browser, go to localhost port 3000, and we see this little error, we could not find your database, but we can click this button to create the database, and now everything's good. So we don't really have anything in this app yet. So I'm gonna start off with something simple. Let's create a post model. So I'll go back to the terminal and I'll do a scaffold. So I'll say Rails G scaffold for a post. A post is gonna have a title. It can have a body, which I'm gonna do rich text. You could either do text or rich text, but rich text just has more options and it's built in with Rails. We can even do an image type attachment. Run that. And then we can run a Rails DB migrate. But because we're using action text and active storage, there's another command we have to run real quick. Rails action text colon install. This will add all the code needed for action text and active storage. And then we'll just have to migrate the database again to add those tables. So now that we've completed this, we can restart the server, but we won't see any, any change right now when we go back to the browser because we haven't set a root for the application. So let's do that real quick. So I'm gonna open up the code in Visual Studio. And I'll just go find my cool app and I'll open that up. Now that I have the code open, I'm gonna go over here on the sidebar, navigate to the config folder and the routes.rb. And then inside of here, we need to set a root for the application. So down at the bottom, there's already a root, but it's commented out. So we could just uncomment it and then it's already gonna go, it's already pointing to the post index. So that's perfect. And if we go back and reload the browser, we'll see that we're on the post index. We can create our first post. And just do everything as we'd expect it. Create the post. Now everything looks good. If we want to display the image right now, it just shows a link to download it. Or actually, I think it's actually a link to display it. So that's okay too. We could display the image too though, if we want to go into the post partial. So the post form and then the underscore post file. And then we could do, instead of linking to the image, we could do, we could change it to an image tag. And then just delete the first option with the file name. And then we could add a class on it too, because we don't want it to take up too much space. So I'll just cover it with 40, which will just show it as a smaller image. Now you see we have our posts. I can create as many posts as I want. And it's pretty cool. We already have this little start setup of our app. And then if we want to do a home page too, uh, we could do that pretty easily. So instead of rooting to the post index, we could root to something like pages, 
home. Now we don't have a pages controller yet, so I'm just gonna the easiest way to do it is to do it from the terminal. You can just go into the terminal and I'll generate a new controller. We're saying Rails G controller pages and then a home action. Just like that. And then that's all we need to do. We can restart the server. And now we have a home page. So see when we refresh we see that we're on the home page. And then we can go and edit that text. So if we go over to the views, the pages, and the home. We can just say like Welcome to my website. This is where we have fun. And then maybe I'll do a link to so I'll link to the post path, but then for the text it'll be so I'll say link to view my posts. And we can just say view view all posts. Check out some new posts. Let's see how that looks. It's like, welcome to my website. This is where we have fun. Check out some new posts. Now, when you click on check out some new posts, it brings you to the uh, post page. Now, if we want to style this up a little bit more, we can go ahead and do that. It's whatever you're feeling artistic wise. It looks like that kind of, hmm, that was a weird styling glitch where the the button kind of interfered. But yeah, look at this. So we have our simple app. And now the question is, how can we get this hosted on a digital ocean droplet? It's actually so easy. So first, if you haven't already, go and create a digital ocean account. So you can just go to digital ocean, sign up, and I'll also put a link in the description. But once you sign up for this account, I'll show you what it looks like. So you just kind of have like, so you have like something like this, where you have all these different options on the side, and then you have your account up here where it has your information. But for us, we're going to go and do the Rails one click so this is almost like a preset that they have. So see if we check this out, the Rails one click. It's this little preset that we can use. So if you go to this URL, which I'll have in the description. So after first you have to sign up for an account and then come here. And we're gonna press create Ruby on Rails droplet. This is going to go to the form to create a new droplet. And then we'll choose where we want our server to be. So depending on where you're, where you want it to be closest to, you could do New York, you could do San Francisco. And then we're just gonna go down, make sure that it's on Ruby on Rails. And then you can choose your options. I actually don't really need like an advanced one for this website. So I'll probably do like the cheapest option. <laughs> just cause, well, I'm gonna cancel this anyways, but it won't use up very many resources. But also we wanna make sure it's not like really bad. Like this probably might be bad, so. Let's at least make sure it has an Intel CPU and like it has some RAM. You know, so that should be pretty good. And then you're gonna need an SSH key. So to do an SSH key, you can just click on add new SSH key. And then it says create a new pair if needed. So you're gonna run this in your console. It's gonna generate the key. And then it'll ask a few things, like it'll say like where do you want it? Just press enter for each of these. Then there's a passphrase. Uh, you don't have to do a passphrase, so you can just press enter. And then after that completes, run this command in the terminal and it'll show you your SSH key. You just copy the whole thing and you drop it in here. And then you can put a name just to kind of organize it. So I already have one, I have a Ubuntu Windows SSH key. So I'm gonna click on that. And it's as simple as just creating the droplet. And then you'll see that this creates our droplet. And it's still setting up right now. All right, so this is what it looks like on the page. 
So it's actually setting up our virtual machine. Right now we're gonna have one gigabyte memory, a CPU, 35 gigabytes of disk space. So that's not bad. I'm just gonna wait for this to set up. And then we'll be on, on our way to getting this working. So it says the droplet has been created. So now we can go over here, click on access, log in as root, and we can launch the droplet console. So when you launch the console, it just looks something like this, where it's gonna open up a little browser window. That's gonna be a direct connection into the machine. Right now it looks like it's loading. The server might not be fully on yet either. I don't know. Let me try again. Yeah, I don't know why it's not working. So we can also, you can also just SSH right into the IP. Since I already have the SSH on my computer. So let's shut down the terminal. Let's just say SSH root and then the IP address we're gonna try to SSH into. And it should just use the token that we already have and do the same thing as this. I don't know why the server's not responding right now. It might just take a second to spin up. All right, it looks like I finally got it to work. So I think it was just taking a second to spin up. But now you'll see we're inside of the console. Let me drop it. Well, I guess I can't zoom in. Well, it shouldn't actually matter. Wait, I can stretch it out. We're inside of the droplet console. So for this preset, it they have instructions on what you're supposed to do. So to get into the directory where all your Rails app are supposed to be, you just do this su-rails. And then we're going to install our website. So I'll show you what that looks like. So we paste this command in. Once we're in this droplet console, we type in su rails, and then it logs into our directory where the rails app would be. Now inside of here, we already have Git. So what we can do is we can clone the repo, which we haven't pushed this code yet. So that's the first step. Actually, if we go back to our local console. Oh, we need to push this to GitHub. So I'm gonna go to my cool app and I'm gonna push this to GitHub. So to push uh, your code to GitHub, it's pretty easy. If you don't already have an account, just go to github.com and sign up. And then inside of here, you can just click new repository. And I'm gonna give this a name. We can call this my cool app YouTube and then you could do public or private so actually public is easier because then you don't even need to sign in to download it so it's, it's actually a lot easier so we can just create the repository and I'm gonna copy this first set of commands and then make sure don't run this in your in your live console run this in your local console and then you still have to add all the files Commit, I'll say first commit, and then I'll push the code up. So now when we go back to our GitHub repo and we reload, we'll see that all the code's already there. And then to download it on our virtual machine, we can just click on code and we'll get the HTTPS link. We'll copy that URL. And then we'll go back into the cloud console, so over here. We'll say git clone the URL. And as you can see, we don't even need credentials. We were just able to clone it since it was public. And then we can cd into the app. Wait, ls. Oh yeah, I called it my cool app YouTube. 
So then we could do some things to configure this app. Like we could run bundle. Oh, right. So actually the Ruby version installed in the virtual machine is 3.2, but my gem file specified 3.3. .3. So there's a few things we can do. We could either change the, the version in our app or we could just install the new version of Ruby. So I don't know what we're using to manage. I think we're using RVM. So we could just try inside of here, RVM install 3.3. 3.3.0, which is the one in our gem file. So I'm gonna run that and see if it works. So yeah, we can just download the version of Ruby we want. Cause this virtual machine is essentially the same as a local machine. It's just a Ubuntu computer. And with the one click, it already has Rails, it already has Postgres, it already has everything. So that's what makes it easy. There's just like a few little things that you have to learn to get it to work. So that's why I have, um, the instructions right here, I'm going to walk you through it. So it looks like everything worked for that. Now if we do Ruby-V, we'll see that we have the new version of Ruby. So I'm just going to go ahead and bundle now that we have the new version. And it should install all of our gems. Alright, so it looks like everything's installing. It should just take only a second. Installing Postgres, installing a few different dependencies. All right, so that finished. Uh, we should be good to go. So now if we want to start the server, uh, we can't do bin dev because, well, that's for development. So actually we have to start doing things for production since we're already here. And just a note, this isn't what like a real, this isn't what your actual production app would look like because you'd probably want to set up some sort of deployment step that makes this easier. But this is just like how I found that you can set up a Rails app easily. But we can set the Rails ENV environment variable, set this to production, and then let's create the database and let's also migrate it. So we're gonna create the production database, migrate it, and then we can try to start the server. So it looks like we get this error, missing secret key base. So that actually makes sense. Uh, we didn't have the secret key base, which I don't even think we had that locally because we never created it. But we can set the secret key base actually. Uh, we don't need to worry about that. We can just set that as another, we can say like secret key base equals zero, equals one. It doesn't really matter. Cause it doesn't really matter what the secret key base is, but it looks like pure authentication failed for user my cool app. So now it's saying that that because there isn't a user called my cool app in the Postgres database. So there's a few things we could do. We could go and create the user in the Postgres console, or we could just modify the config database.yml. So the reason this isn't working is because we need to set the database credentials. So in on this one click guide, we show the message, but it'll show you what the credentials are. So we're gonna take uh, the user and password right here. We're gonna go and put that into our app. So actually let's do env. So we can keep these secure. So let's make a .env file. And then inside of here, we would just put our proscast rate user equals there. And then also our proscast password. 
is equal to the password. And these are specified in this guide. This is just the default credentials. You definitely want to change this because uh, this is not secure. So to change it, you just log into the Postgres console and you change the, you update the password. But we actually, we aren't going to be able to upload our .env to GitHub because it's automatically ignored. And you, you're not supposed to publish your env variables anyways. But the one thing we are going to do is we're going to specify, we're going to set in our config database.yml file. We're going to go in here and we're going to go down to the production block. We're going to make sure that this uses the correct keys. So instead of this hard-coded username, we will use env postgres user. And then for the password, it's just postgres password. And just like that, we're good to go. So we can push this code that we changed in the database file. We can push that up to the server. And to do that, we're just going to push to GitHub and then we're going to sign into the server and pull down the latest code. So first locally, we're going to go into our app. Let's check gig status and you'll see the only file that shows up as changed is the config database. Even though we added an env, it just doesn't get tracked. So we're going to add our new change to that config database file. And then we're going to commit it. We're going to say adding Postgres creds for prod. Then we can push. And now from here, we're going to go and get that latest code. So we'll go back to DigitalOcean. We'll open up our droplet and go to the access. And then we'll go and launch the droplet console. Now that we launched the console, I'm going to go over to the Rails section by doing su-rails. And then I'm going to cd into our app, my cool app YouTube. I'm going to do a git status. And see, we actually did change the database file already. So let's just restore our changes. Say git restore dot. And then I'll just git pull to get the newest changes. So this is good, we have everything, we have the new changes for the database, but we don't have any credential file. So to create the credential file, I'm just gonna type vi, which is for vim, which is gonna be the editor I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna type in .env, which is the name of the env file. So now that we're in vim, we're just gonna drop the credentials from our local app over here in the .env file. We're gonna drop that right in here. And then we can right quick. So to right quit out of a file in Vim, you just press, first you press escape, then you press shift and to get like these, the two dots, the colon, then do W, Q, exclamation, and then enter. And that'll save the file. So now we have our ENV file here. And if we were to do Rails S, it should actually work. Oh, except for we get this error. So yeah, the, the address is already in use. It's already in use. All right, let's exit out. So let's try to stop the service. So there's a service that gets run with this installer it uses a one click, like with this one click installer, it uses this service to run the Rails app. So I'm gonna stop that service with this command. All right, so now that we've stopped the service, uh, we can check a status on it and let's make sure that's stopped. So it looks like it's inactive. So basically what was happening is with this one click installer, there already is an example Rails app that it'll spin up by default. So we just have to make sure that that service is off. And then actually, we're going to edit the install script. So in this log that gets triggered every time you start and also on this guide page down here, it includes all the instructions on how to edit. Well, actually it doesn't really show like the instructions that well, but basically 
we can come into this file, this system file, and that's how we edit uh, which app is running. So we have to edit this. So you can use whatever editor, but I'm going to use Vim. That's the one I'm most comfortable with. So now when we go into this folder, we'll see there's like a whole bunch of different stuff. So most of this doesn't really matter, like unit. You can add the description, you can change that. But really, the biggest thing that is important that makes a difference is the working directory and also the command to run. So all you have to do is change this directory to our app. So instead of example, it would be the name of our, like the path to our app, which for us is just like my cool app. YouTube, I'm pretty sure it was just this. And then instead of using Puma, which we could do Puma, but let's just do Rails S to keep it simple. Oops. So Rails S, and the right quick out of this. And then I'm just gonna go back to this command. And instead of doing stop, I'm gonna do restart, which should restart the service. Although when I restart it, it says, oh, because we changed the file, we need to reload the daemon. So I have to run this command. Reload the daemon, and now we should be able to restart our service. And then if we check the status of the service, it says it's active and the server is running. So what this means is we should be able to view this app if we go to the IP address in the browser. So first of all, let's find out what our IP address is. So if we go back here, you'll see the IP address is just whatever is right here, the IPv4. We can copy this and then go into the browser. We'll do HTTP slash slash and then we'll put the IP address. And when we go here, we'll see we have the same screen we saw as in development. And there's actually, there's no database. So let's try to create the database real quick. Okay, create database, run the migrations. <clears throat> oh, so look, everything actually worked. The only thing now is we get this error, the asset Tailwind CSS is not present. So usually when we're doing bin dev, it's compiling all the assets as we decode and it's putting it into a Tailwind file. But right now we didn't build the service. So that's actually something you have to do is compile the assets. So to do that, well, we could just change our, our script. So we could go back to the Rails service in this Vim. And let's change the script. So instead of just Rails S, it'll actually do, oh, whoops. Kind of did some typos there, but let's do uh, Rails assets colon precompile and Rails S. So first it'll actually compile the assets and then it'll start the server. All right, quit out of this. And then we're gonna have to do those two commands. So first we're gonna have to reload the daemon and then we can restart the Rails service. And let's check the status of that. It should actually be compiling right now. So, hmm. all right, I think it compiled. I think it did everything correctly. So let's go back in the browser, reload. Perfect, so it did compile the assets and we you'll see we have all of our styling and everything's working just as expected. So yeah, this is how you can set up your first app uh, using the one click. Although it's not really like very smoothed out right now, it's gonna be hard to push because every time you have to push, you just would have to like open up the console and go pull the code with GitHub. But I'm gonna try to figure out how I can do uh, a build step, maybe just a script and then I'll do a video on that too. But to finish this off, if you want to see how you can connect your droplet to um, a URL, like a domain, it's actually really easy. So it's easier than like any of this. It's just, you go up here, you go click on create, and then you click on domain slash DNS, and you enter the name of your domain. So for example, I'll go to my GoDaddy account, and I have a ton of domains. So I'll go to my products and I'll just find one that I'm not really using. But yeah, like I have so many, whoops. For example, let's go to rescue P. Let's manage this. This was one like, it was like a recipe generator that I was working on. Oh wait, so actually we wanna go to the DNS settings. All right, so I'm gonna click DNS. And then we're gonna actually click name servers. 
and right now it's using default name servers but basically i'll show you what we do so we go over here first we put in our domain so for us it's like rescuep.com and then we specify what projects it's going to be on we add the domain and then we enter well actually this is how we can get it to to go to connect to our ip so here's like ip of our app right here so we'll connect it to it and then if we do uh the at sign it'll match everything like this but then we also want to match the ones with www so we're going to do two we're going to do one for the at to match without the ww a prefix and then we're also going to do one with www we'll go to the same droplet so we have two of them right and then basically what we have to do next is we have to update the name servers so see it says learn how to do that well it's pretty easy I just need to see. Oh yeah, it's just see. It's like these three ones. So you just add these, these three options. So change name servers, and then you say I'll use my own name server, and then you just go one, two, three, and then save. It's actually gonna probably try to confirm my information, like if I continue. But this is how you do it, and then after you do that. Uh, in a few minutes, it should actually update, and then you'd be able to go to the name of that browser or the name of that website. So actually, why don't I do that? Um, so we need all three of these. We need one, two, three. Save it. Continue. It's gonna probably tell me to confirm my identity. Oh, actually no. <laughs> it's just doing it. Anyways, then when we go to rescuep.com in the browser although i don't think it would work already well, not rescue i meant rescue p oh wow so it actually is working already but funny enough it's saying like it's not allowing it ww i think it's trying to force <clears throat> no wait I, I'm, I'm confused I think it's because we're in development. Yeah, I forgot. So actually, let's go back into the console and let's go edit this script again. And let's set an environment variable to actually make this be like the production. So we'll say rails env equals production. And I'll do that before I run any of these commands. <clears throat> and I'll right click, reload the daemon. And restart the service. Now we're actually going to be running in production. But you'll see. Uh, it looks like there was an error. Now that we're trying to run it in production. I'm not sure what the error was though. But if we want to look at the logs. The logs are stored right here. It shows us in the welcome message. We can just simply cat the logs and see what it says. Uh, well, these are the Nginx logs. <clears throat> I'm not really sure. So I'm just going to SU Rails to go into the Rails app. And then I'll go in here and I'll just start, try to start the server manually. Rails app, so it works. But I think the problem is when we do the Rails environment production. Oh, it's probably going to say something about the secret key base. Right, yeah. So actually, I'm going to do a a fake secret key base although we can set this really easily yeah i guess that was it so <clears throat> what we have to do is let's quickly just for now let's go back edit this so that we also pass in secret key base equals one just so that rails doesn't freak out <clears throat> and then we'll re re reload the daemon restart the service and now it should work we check the status Looks like everything's working, it's active. We should have the production app ready now. And going back, I'm not seeing it. So the regular app is working, but like when I try to access it through the domain, it's not working. I have no idea why. Config host, I guess we have to add this to our app.
So if we wanted to add that to the app, we'd have to quickly go back into SE Rails, then CD into my app, and we'll edit config slash application.rb. And we'll add this line, basically just to permit the rescueb.com host. We'll right click. And let's go ahead and restart the rail service, which will also restart our server. And this might take a second because that's to compile the assets. But if you look at that, now our URL is working. And it also would work with www. Now the security, actually, <laughs> funny that I say that, I guess it doesn't. It, so maybe there's something I can do to like some sort of CSS regex. But we could also just add this. Uh, I don't want to do it though. See if we want to permit. I guess we need like, just like this would actually have worked. New code. This process is. I'm getting tired of it already. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a long process. And it's like definitely something we could do with a script. It doesn't make any sense why I'm doing this by hand. Uh, so that's why people do like the deploy step, restart. So we're going to have to add that too. I have to give it a second to compile the assets. It's not on yet. But now it's on. See, so we have it. We have our base URL, but we also have the www, and they both connect. So perfect. This is just what I wanted, and I hope you guys found this helpful. This is how you can spin up an app. It doesn't have to be Rails. Uh, it could be any. But yeah, use the. So really, what I used is the Rails one-click preset to create my droplet. So see, it's right in here. It's on the marketplace. You can just easily click this button and then it'll use Ruby on Rails. It'll already have it set up on the VM and then it has this config. See, so this is what they say like you edit this Rails service, that's where you specify the app and then the command to use. So, I on my personal site, I actually use Docker and I just have this doing a Docker compose as a command for my app and it works wonderfully. So, I'll definitely make a video about how to use Docker with this. I'll probably do that next. I hope you guys are excited for new videos. And I'm sorry there's been but such a delay. But I'm going to get back to it. I'm really excited about making new content.